Folks, I'm an RV tech and I went undercover at dealerships to tell you which brands are quality and which are overpriced lemons. Today we're going to be reviewing a Forest River Cherokee Wolf Pup 17JG, which you might also see with a Patriot Edition graphic on the front. Even if you're not in the market for this RV, I'd encourage you to still watch this video because you'll learn how to avoid the roof blowing off of your RV, and how to figure out if they skimped out on the suspension, and much, much more. If you're new here, I have a free RV shopper's class. Class. And if you upgrade to the paid version, you'll get access to the RV shopping app, which is what you'll see me using to grade this RV today. So after answering a few basic questions about year, make, and model in the app, the first question is going to be about the type of water heater it has. This RV has a tank type suburban brand water heater, which I think is quality. I give it a 10 out of 10. So next, the app is going to ask about the type of roofing on the RV. This one has a TPO roof membrane, which I think is quality. I give it a 10 out of 10. However, sometimes there are factory defects, bubbles in the roof that when you're driving down the highway, wind going up and over the RV can pull those bubbles and actually tear the entire roof off of an RV. So if you're buying a new RV, you need to be inspecting for these kinds of factory defects. This is one of the items covered in my Don't Buy a Lemon checklist, which you get for free if you sign up for any of my RV shopping classes. Next, the app is going to ask about what refrigerator the RV has. And unfortunately, in this case, it has an Everchill. Now, Everchill is actually one brand that's put on a type of refrigerator. You'll also see GE or Magic Chef or can Canon? Canon. I have one sitting in my shop. It's the same refrigerator. In my opinion, all the same junk. It has a pretty high failure rate, especially on one of the electronic components. And Everchill actually doesn't sell replacement parts for these things, folks. If it's not under warranty, that's a $1,500 fridge that's just gone kaput. I give this one a 6 out of 10. Next, it's going to ask about the AC brand. This one has a Coleman. I've had to replace a lot of Coleman's that simply lost their Freon. Seems that Coleman has a problem with quality control as far as who's soldering joints together that keep the Freon in. So that's why I give this a 7 out of 10 rating. So the next question in the app is going to be about assessing the cabinet quality. And on these, I was happy to see that they have solid wood frames on the door panels. Cabinet boxes, although, have lumber core with a vinyl wrap on it. If you don't know what lumber core is, it is a solid wood board with a very thin layer of sometimes plywood. Usually in the case of RVs, it's an eighth inch MDF layer, medium density fiber boards. I would say the cabinet boxes are kind of medium quality. Overall, I give it an eight out of 10. So the next question in the app is about countertops. In this RV, all the countertops are MDF covered in thermofoil. I don't like thermofoil because if you set a curling iron on it or a hot pot, you can burn through that thermofoil and then water will get to the MDF and swell it up or at the edges of a sink if they don't caulk it properly, which it's hard to get caulking to stick to thermofoil because it is a plastic. Water can seep in the edges at a sink and start swelling up the MDF underneath the thermofoil. It's not a material that's going to have a lot of longevity. I give this a 2 out of 10. Okay, so the next category would be slide outs and this RV has a Schwintex slide mechanism in it, which a lot of people say they're really really junk and I agree. So one thing that you can do if you're looking at an RV that has a Schwintec is to look at these rollers, these V-shaped rollers on the outside at the bottom. If you can't spin it easily with your finger, that could be a sign that it was installed incorrectly and you may want to go pick a different RV. Next question in the app is going to be talking about plumbing and it's a dirty secret of the RV industry that many RVs are not plumbed according to the code that the RVIA supposedly adopts and supposedly enforces the NFPA code. The reason these codes exist is that when you don't plumb things properly, it creates water leaks. So did Forest River plumb this RV correctly? Thankfully, yes, they did. They did not do the thing that should never be done of pinch clamping flexible hose on apex fitting. I've got a whole video on that. I'll link it at the end if you want to watch. I know it's difficult because you want to know just what brands to trust. Like is Forest River a good brand or not? And while there are other brands that always plumb their RVs correctly, Forest River is hit or miss. If you've seen my other video about the east to west Silver Lake that is a Forest River product. That one had some pretty bad plumbing in it. So does Forest River have some lines of products that are always plumbed badly and other lines of products that are plumbed 
correctly? Yes. Is the RV industry insane? Yes. Folks, if you're out shopping RVs and you don't know what brands to trust and you want a quality RV, but you don't want to break the bank, I highly recommend that you get my shopping course to help you in that process. The shopping app really gives you the power to know instantly if there's a deal breaker on an RV. Every week I've got people out there grading new RVs. These are going into and building up the master database. The database will make it very easy for you to compare which brands are doing well as far as things like cargo weight rating or which ones consistently get it wrong on things like plumbing. Next, let's talk about the cargo weight rating on this RV. I was really surprised to see the cargo weight rating on this RV is 1,220 pounds. And sure enough, they put a 5,200 pound rated axle under it instead of a lighter duty 3,500 pound axle. So I always double check the cargo weight rating on these things because some of these travel trailers are very, very light, like a couple hundred pounds of cargo weight rating, which means that they've actually skimped out on the suspension. So fit and finish on this RV. And this is the most arbitrary grade because that can change from unit to unit, even with the same exact year make and model of RV. On this one, the thing that I took off a lot of points for is especially the kitchen countertop isn't really affixed to the wall. You can see the line of caulking at the back of the countertop where it meets the wall is cracked and the countertop is sagging. I've dealt with this on numerous trailers. It's because they don't put adequate support at the back edge of the countertop and they don't use enough anchors to hold it to the wall. And so when it's going down the road and just vibrations make it tear loose. This is a big problem because water running off the countertop will go back around the edge of the countertop and start damaging all sorts of stuff, especially the MDF thermofoil countertop. I give it a six out of 10 because this is going to be a problem that really needs to be corrected. Total score for this RV is a 75. I would say this is a C grade trailer, but it's also $22,950 average retail value. I mean, do you get what you pay for here? I think so. It's a budget friendly camper. Click here for a list of all the travel trailers I've reviewed. Click here for a playlist of all the RVs I've reviewed, or click here if you're interested to know more about the plumbing problem I mentioned.